thank you everyone for joining us for our weekly interlude with Seattle Chamber Music Society. This week, we're joined by two guests. Uh, we're very pleased to have Ronald Thomas, uh, cellist, and Cynthia Phelps, violist, joining us. Uh, both of you, I did the calculations, have joined us now. Cynthia, this is your 30th summer uh, coming here. And Ron, this will be your 35th. So uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah. It's been a long time. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, you're you're sort of the the old guard that remembers the festivals from the beginning, and and we'll we'll chat about that a little bit here in a minute. Uh, first things first, we always like to check and just ensure you guys are are staying healthy. You're doing well, staying safe. Yes, I've been I've been secluded in my house practically without a break since <laughs> this all began. So I'm trying to stay healthy. Good. Yep. Good. We're doing okay though. We have our younger daughter is living with us. She's 22. And um, she was on a tour actually uh, of the musical theater show Waitress. She was okay. playing cello and guitar on that tour and they shut it down and she came home and she's been here ever since. So well, it's we're nice to spend some, along. Yeah, some extra time with family that you know maybe isn't expected, but hopefully it's it's been enjoyable for everybody. Yes, absolutely. Good. And you guys are just outside of New York City, correct? We are. We're in New Jersey. We're in Bergen County. So that was the hardest hit, the first hardest hit um, county in New Jersey. Um, in fact, the town that was had the most cases is right next to ours. So it was pretty scary there for a while. Um, it's yeah. starting to ease up. That's good. I know, now. you know, the New York and New Jersey area was hit particularly hard. So, uh, so I thought I would jump in and, you know, we could talk a little bit about the past and then we'll look ahead to the future a little bit as well but um you know both of you have been here for you know uh, quite some time 30 plus years for both of you now uh and i thought it would be kind of interesting from your perspective as musicians you know what has made seattle chamber music society a place that you know has been such a integral part and a, such a long standing part of your musical lives well for me always um, had to do with my fellow musicians. Um, that there was a, there's always been a great concentration of the highest talent um, at the festival. And originally Toby and now Jimmy uh, attracted the, some of the finest young players, but more, not so much important that they were young, except for I was young once, but, uh, but, but very fine players. So you always knew that your colleagues, you know, when you got sat down to make music and, you know, we had really very, relatively very little prep time for each concert. You know that everybody was going to be there and be prepared and, and have something important musically to offer. Great. Yeah, absolutely. I feel the same way. Um, and the other thing that makes Seattle so unusual and so much fun is um, the idea that we get together and we eat all of our meals together as well. Um, that's very unusual. And as Ron was saying, because we put these programs together so quickly, you, you really have to gain trust quickly. And so when you go from rehearsing a piece to sitting down and actually talking about it, your lives and what your season has been like, then then you're still sharing information and, and feeling um, sort of the same carryover of intimacy that you have in rehearsal. And so they feed off of one another. It's an unusual festival that way. And it's always been sort of a magic formula um, to really get terrific performances. She said feed off of, get it? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you know, I'm curious too, because you have been here, you know, year after year. Um, you know, Toby, I think created this, this festival that was a way to bring her friends together when it first started, but it has clearly grown, you know, under her leadership. And then, as you men mentioned with Jimmy, um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, what may have changed or grown over the years or, or, you know, the things that, as you say, those lunches that have made it, you know, a special place that has continued, um, you know, things that are, still very similar, but you know, they were rooted in such great ideas that has made this such a successful place and a fun place to come. One of the 
things I've noticed over the generations is is how much more able the young players of today were are than than some thirty years ago. I mean, not that the players thirty years ago weren't wonderful and terrific, but is it's a real sign of the times that 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 the traditions have been indeed passed on. And and we're now seeing the results of that, that, that the younger players are are more up to speed, perhaps I could say, playing chamber music and putting things together. Yeah, it's true. I it, it's very true. There's definite they're definitely very well versed and eager and so well prepared um, to collaborate. And you would think you know, when you're older, you've played the the Schubert Octet or the Schumann Quintet, or, you know, you've played all these pieces a lot. And we're getting these younger players that maybe haven't played it as much as the older players, but they're every bit as prepared and have good ideas. And um, they're I think actually up to speed with where the previous group left off. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, you know, we, we talk about, we talk a lot about that you know in playing chamber music and the chamber music traditions and where they came from and but 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 this is a chance to actually have witnessed it firsthand that's great do you think that's uh you know to pat yourselves on the back maybe a little bit because you guys uh, have shared that with the younger generation or do you think there's something that has changed that you know as prepared or more prepared than you know maybe when you first were starting I think that, that that all of all of us from our generation, um, it's not a patting ourselves on the back. It's just what we do, you know, and and it's what was done for us, you know. Definitely, um, you know, I do feel that. So we were part of the generation before, you know, everybody had iPhones and before. Um, I remember. Um, when everyone brought their computer and they would sit around Toby Sachs's house with their computers. And I remember we would be going, I don't want to be on a computer right now. So, it, so obviously there is so much information that's easily ascertainable at this point. And I also think that having um, a music director like James, who is a big international soloist, you know, and so much of his playing is available, you know, yet he's still in the string quartet. I mean, he's, he's a really good leader and, um, so admired by so many people and i think the fact that he's running this festival a lot of young kids look up to him and and have an interest in going and also have an interest in having a musical identity beyond just being a soloist um because he obviously exemplifies that in his own career the the whole um art of chamber music is as ron was saying in such good hands these days there was a time when the great soloist is violinists were not considered great chamber music players in many cases. And same with violists and cellists. I mean, but it, 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 it's much more merged now. It's just all about music making. Yeah, same yeah. with, um, you know, the sym symphony orchestra musicians, such as myself, you know, um, they're so much more able to play chamber music on such a high, great level. One of the things that I always thought was so amazing when I heard James talk about it was, you know, someone that may have just finished their schooling, uh, when they came here, they were seen as equals, even if he had taught them at some point in a master class or something like that, that, you know, there isn't this sense of, well, I've been doing this for 30 plus years or, or however long that we're all bringing something fresh and new to the music and, and open to those new ideas that might be coming into the music, which- but Toby really went out of her way to bolstered the confidence of young musicians. But as as someone to have really done that in a way that is not maybe being done so often, um, for example. And when she was playing in groups, um, she would really um, encourage the voice of a new or young artist. Yeah, when yeah. James was a young artist. I was going to say, <laughs> you know, he started at one point as a 18 or 19 year old here and um, yeah, yeah. we used to call him pencil boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure that he's reminded of that. <laughs> I'm sure he'll love that. <laughs> and there were that 
<laughs> uh, well, you know, thinking ahead, I mean, I know that both of you are actually going to still be coming out here and, and joining us in Seattle for the summer. Um, obviously, we've had to adjust and make changes so that, you know, everybody's safety comes first and foremost, but we're we're so glad that you're still willing to come out here and perform and really working with others instead of, you know, why was it, I guess, in your mind, important to still make that happen? Um, and what should we look forward to hearing from you guys this summer while you are here? Um, well, I'm super excited to play uh, the Vaughn Williams Quintet, Piano Quintet, which is a not very well-known work, um, but it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it stands out because it's the, or the, uh, the instrumentation is violin, viola, cello, double bass, piano. So you can imagine that would appeal to me because the sonority level is, is, is dark and rich and deep and it's just a glorious piece. So I'm super excited about that. And we're also in two string quartets together. You want to talk about that's that right. a That's right, the wonderful late Schubert A minor quartet and a Haydn quartet and the first um, one movement Schubert string trio. And um, you know, as far as what got us to go out there, I think if it was any place else, we may not have done it. But but because we have such a history, a wonderful history in Seattle, not not just at the festival, but but really deep and and. Um, important relationships, friendships that we've, we've um, acquired over the years that, that it's also a draw. Well, yeah. we're very we thankful. Such wonderful patrons and donors and audience members, so supportive. Um, and as Ron said, you know, we've nurtured these friendships and have looked forward to it year after year. So. We were thrilled that this was going to actually take place. I've been staying at the same home uh, um, for since 1987. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. So, did say you know you really develop a relationship with people. Yeah, they kind of become an extended family that you are excited to come back and see and, and catch up with. And Cynthia, I know that you've been doing quite a bit of work with the New York Phil right now. You know, I, obviously everything is upended and you guys aren't able to perform as normal. But, um, you know, I saw uh, the video that you sent to us that we'll share that uh, was kind of doing your part to help raise awareness and, and what's going on currently with the protests and the marches. Uh, is that something that most of the musicians are, are kind of finding a way to give voice to what's what's happening socially right now or? Um, our social media committee has been extremely active um, in getting us out there doing things. We recorded a portion of Bolero, all of us together. And it's it's hard, you know, you have to, you have to have a click track going and have the right specifications to be able to record and be part of an ensemble. Um, so we did a few things like that. We recorded, um, <laughs> believe it or not, pomp and circumstance for the graduation uh, from Terrific. YouTube, the 2020 graduation. Uh, we do, it's going on right now, I think. The Obamas <laughs> are speaking, and it's it's a really big, high-profile event. So um, we've just tried to be able to um, keep each other's spirits up. Um, I, in fact, did a socially distanced concert in the um, front yard of um, one of our board members' places. Yes, of course, the Take Two yeah. Knees initiative. Yeah. That was from Anthony Miguel. Um, both Anthony McGill and Damari McGill have been um, at the Seattle Festival uh, for several summers. And um, it was, it's a very, very powerful way to make um, a voice heard. You know, I, I'm an older white woman, privileged. It's hard for me to understand and really relate. And so it just opens, it just opens the door for us to be able to spread um, the idea that it's time for change. It's time to listen. It's time to, for action. And when you're sidelined and you can't perform, it's frustrating, you know, but we're still privileged. So I, I think that, well, I just, I think that we're doing everything we can to be relevant and to be a part of today's community and today's issues. One of the other videos that I saw that you had done was with the New York Philharmonic String Quartet, uh, a piece that you did with Daniel Trifonov 
um, a piece that that he had had written, the Quintetto Concertante. Uh, yes. You know, it was released, or at least what I saw, it was released in early May. Obviously, it must have been recorded before that. You know, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that piece and sure, the production sure. of it, and and when it came together? Absolutely. Yes, we played it at the um, 92nd Street Y in early December. Um, okay. Danny. Neil is a is um believe it or not he's a board member, <laughs> the Philharmonic, the youngest board member ever, um, <laughs> who's had a close relationship. He was our artist in residence one year, mm -hmm. and um, he's a really terrific player, obviously interesting guy. And he wrote this quintet um, after a very tragic accident. Um, his friend lost a child, and um, he just he, he he doesn't compose a lot but he'll get into a, a, a frenzy and just all of a sudden produce something. And then he won't compose again for a couple of years. So it's, it's very, very interesting. It, the quintet, I think, is, it's got all kinds of elements in it. It's dark and it's brooding, but it also has very um, fast, uplifting um, melodies to it. Um, I, it, was, it was a challenge because we didn't have a lot of rehearsal time. And he was very easy about everything anything that we wanted to just sort of change or tweak. He said, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, oh, that, great. That's <laughs> so it was, it was an interesting experience um, yeah. and a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah, I'm curious because, you know, we have done uh, new pieces here at Seattle Chamber Music Society over the years with our commissioning club and just in your own careers of playing new music. Um, what, you know, what is it like getting music that's never been heard, there's not really a reference. What's the process of putting a piece together that feels maybe different or the same as putting together a Schubert quintet or, or another piece that you may have played? Well, one of the most essential things that, that kind of um, prevents a lot of um, new music from being played at a festival is, is you really need more preparation time because the first few rehearsals are just getting to know something and letting it kind of seep in and then there's more work to be done after that and when you only have a couple of days of rehearsal starting something new is is often just impossible um if you want to do a good job with it so so I think that that's, um, you know, that's why we don't hear more new music at chamber music festivals, just because of the time constraints. It's, it's challenging for sure. I mean, these days you can get a MIDI recording, even if it's a premiere, the composer can um, supply you with an electronic, you, have, you get an idea of the, the scope and the feeling and the style and, um, and also everyone else's part most important thing so that you know what to yeah. listen for the chamber music i mean the, the key to chamber music is always listening to everyone else yourself last mostly you know um so you can't do that if you don't know what anyone else's part is which is yeah. why ron was just, it it it's a very different experience one other question that we are always asking everybody that's you know been at home and and doing well is so are there things that you guys are doing to fill your time outside of music? Are you cooking a lot more? Are you reading new things or binge watching shows or movies or anything like that? What else is uh, your day look like knowing that, you know, the regular routine is, is no more? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia is cooking dinners now for the first time in how long? Ever. <laughs> Ever. He's always been the cook, always been the cook in our family. But I don't have concerts every night, you know, four nights a week. Yeah, so, of course. Um, I'm doing all the shopping because we like to keep him safe indoors. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm also sneaking out and playing tennis just about every day. You know, we've just continued to play throughout this pandemic. So, so it, I think it's really important to get exercise no matter what. So I'm always mm -hmm. outside exercising, you know, careful, not around people, except my one tennis partner and get the groceries and but we do have a we do have a rhythm ron has um been composing these amazing um, how do you describe it your bach project well well i i wrote second parts to to all 
36 movements of the Vox suites. Not, not to be performed that way, of course, because, because nothing can improve on what Bach did, but, but really for, for more pedagogical purposes, you know, to, to show uh, harmonic movement and, and the variety, the infinite variety of, of phraseologies, if I can say that, it's not really a word, but phrase, <laughs> phrase makeup. And, and, um, and just as a, as a teaching tool. And so that's Perfect. so I taught myself how to do all this stuff on the computer. Of course, there was a little bit of a learning curve there, but um, and then some movements are really tricky to write to, but um, all in all, it's been, it's been all consuming and, um, and it's taken me a a little over two years to finish. Wow. So we've been, we've been, um, so we've been busy. We're home. And, and yeah. so we've been running through them and, you know, we're all here to, to yeah. play together. And our youngest daughter is a cellist too. So, Great. you know, we've been playing together a little bit. She has her own recording projects going on, you know, at any given time, there will be one of us up here and one here and one in the basement doing different recording projects. So I, I think the, I think the most important thing is to, to have a sense of rhythm in your own house mm -hmm. and to have a sense of, Peace. You know, we have dinner together just about every night, of course, and we will watch something entertaining. You know, I like all the PBS stuff and right. <laughs> like the shows and. But yeah, we could get to spend some time together and and, and apart and, a, and apart. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, with with goals and purpose. We we um we're both we're both teaching um so we had all the, all of our students to get through the end of the semester so that was mm -hmm. a lot of work that was learning how to use Zoom how to give lessons on okay. Zoom so there was a lot of figuring out how to get students through the end of the semester and that really took up you know I would say mm -hmm. up until just the end, almost to the end of May. This, this has been a difficult time to be a conservatory student. I mean, um, I had a number of students who were just finishing this year. Who had recitals that they couldn't play, uh, and and so it was it was challenging for them. Yeah, so, it was hard. One of my students' sister is also violist, so there were two viola sisters living together. So we gave them a copy of Run's um, Bach arrangements, and one of them did it on her senior recital in oh, their lovely. from their bedroom. <laughs> That's excellent. Really cool. Never expected to hear any of this stuff actually played. But there it was. Well, I really appreciate you guys spending some time this afternoon um, chatting with us. Uh, we, we're looking forward to the summer so much, obviously. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, we can't wait. We're so excited to be back in Seattle.